Elder Orson Pratt addressed the conference. Thirty-nine years ago yesterday, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was organized. Although we have been driven and persecuted so many times, yet by the providences of God we have been always permitted to co commemorate the anniversary of that great event. Our journeyings to this place have, heretofore, been slow and laborious. The Lord has put into the hearts of the people of this continent to construct a great highway, so that what heretofore was a journey of months is now reduced to one of a few days. Notwithstanding the facilities for gathering Israel are greatly increased, the poor cannot be brought here without great expense. Many of the saints who are yet in the world are looking with longing eyes to this people for assistance to enable them to gather. When many of the latter left their relatives and friends in the lands of their birth, they felt in their hearts that if the Lord would bless them temporally, they would assist those friends and relatives to come to Zion. Those saints have come here and have been prospered. Then they should not forget those whom they have left behind when they have means to use for their deliverance. We have made sacred and holy covenants before God. Those covenants will have to be answered upon our heads before the great judge of all. The covenants we make by silently lifting our hands to heaven are as binding upon us as though they had been spoken or entered into in writing. Many make covenants and then break them in a few days after they had made. Such give themselves up to fault-finding, grumbling, and the powers of darkness. We often make covenants at our conferences. If we have made a covenant to keep what is called the word of wisdom, and have broken that covenant, shall we not come under condemnation? None can plead ignorance in relation to this matter, for it has been taught to the people in every part of this territory. Have we not arrived at a point in our history as the people of God, when we can attend to these simple matters? If the people were more faithful, the destroyer would have less power. The Lord has promised that the destroying angel should pass by those who comply with his word. In some instances, the people do not conform to the teachings and examples of the highest authorities of the church. Another cause is the physical weakness we have inherited from our fathers. Money is said to be the root of all evil. When the love of money is allowed to be implanted in our, in our hearts, we have within us a fruitful source of many of the evils that exist in the world. This love of money has been sown in the hearts of the human family and is very difficult to eradicate. The Lord revealed to Joseph Smith that the saints should consecrate all property that they did not need for the sport of their families and throw it into the treasury of the Lord's house. The Order of Enoch comprehended not only spiritual but temporal things. This consecrated property was to be used for a variety of purposes, for the support of widows and orphans and the building up of the New Jerusalem. Since we came here, what have many been doing? Building up our enemies with our means. Yet the servants of the Lord have been pleading with this people in relation to our property concerns. The cooperative movement is but one step towards that great order of things that have been revealed by the Lord. Until the people are prepared to carry out the revealed laws in relation to property, Zion cannot be redeemed. We have made one step in the right direction, but we will not stop here. The draining of thousands of dollars from this people into the hands of our enemies, who would use the means thus obtained to destroy us, has been stayed. The outsiders, who have filled their pockets with the means of this people, do not like this movement. Yet, as our president has said, sensible men will say, This is a wise move of you Mormons. The surest mode for the enrichment of the people is to manufacture everything needed to supply our own necessities. As our president has sometimes said, our wants are many, but our real necessities are few.